Hello everyone, welcome back. There's one more important property of the cross product that we have yet to discuss, and that's how we can use the cross product or really the magnitude of the cross product to find the area of a parallelogram. And so this is giving us another geometric interpretation of the cross product or the magnitude of the cross product. So suppose we have our two three-dimensional vectors, A maybe looks like this, and let's just say B looks something like this. Well then, we can create a parallelogram by placing another copy of our vector A at the tip of our vector B, and likewise, another copy of our vector B at the tip of our vector A. And it turns out that this uh, geometric version of our cross product is actually gonna help us find the area of this parallelogram. But first, we have to remember, how do you find the area of a parallelogram? Well, going back to some of our basic geometry, the area of a parallelogram is gonna be the length of the base multiplied by the height or the altitude. Right, and so what we mean by the height or the altitude is not the length of that second diagonal or slanted vector, but the actual height of our parallelogram measured from that baseline uh, denoted by our vector B. What we can see is that this right triangle here is gonna have an angle theta, where this angle theta is gonna be the angle between our two vectors, A and B. And so then what we can figure out using a little bit of right triangle trigonometry is the height of this right triangle, which is gonna represent the altitude or the total height of our parallelogram. And so in our right triangle over here, the hypotenuse is given by the magnitude of our vector A, and we wanna find out some information about the side length opposite of our angle between our two vectors, and our sine function is gonna help us do just that. So for now, that height is maybe unknown, or we can call it H, and what we know is if we take sine of our angle theta using right triangle trigonometry or SOHCAHTOA, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that'll give us H over the magnitude of our vector A. So multiplying both sides by the magnitude of our vector A, we can see that the height of our parallelogram really is just the magnitude of A times sine of theta. So kind of plugging that information into our area of a parallelogram formula, the base times the height. Well, the base is gonna be given by the length of our vector B or the magnitude of our vector B. And we just saw that the altitude or the height is given by the magnitude of A times sine of theta. And so well, that looks a heck of a lot like our cross product formula in its geometric version. The only difference is it's missing that unit vector N attached at the end. And well, if we take the absolute value, of our cross product formula. We're gonna get the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times sine of theta times the magnitude of N. But since N is a unit vector, its magnitude is one. So it just disappears or turns into a factor of one. So putting all this together, we can kind of prove or see that the area of a parallelogram is really just given by the magnitude of the cross product between the two vectors to describe the edges of the parallelogram or the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times sine of the angle between the two vectors.